So first of all, understanding the underlying mechanisms of anger, you know, uh, and the triggers for anger is important when we're talking about anger management. What if it's something about their, either their personality or their past that of course influences their personality? Hello, Dr. Jeff here from Essential Health. Today we're gonna to be talking about anger and anger management. So first of all, what is anger? Anger is described as a secondary emotion when it comes to the field of uh, psychiatry and mental health. There are uh, no formal diagnoses related to anger. However, the behavior is related to when people are angry, whether it be if dealing with you know, anxiety, dealing with depression, dealing with other emotional stuff, uh, you know, the behaviors that come as a result can be diagnosable. However, there is no like anger management disorder that to speak in the uh, psychiatric and psychological you know, um, verbiage. However, we know that anger exists. We know that anger is a real thing and it's, a, it's an emotion that people are challenged to deal with and manage on a daily basis. So first of all, understanding the underlying mechanisms of anger you know, uh, and the triggers for anger is important when we're talking about anger management. Um, there's been an example that I've used when doing uh, group therapy over the past 25 plus years, uh, which sort of shed light on some of the components of anger and how uh, anger is triggered. So here's an example. You're sitting in a public place, let's say a fast food restaurant. All of a sudden, a rolled up piece of paper comes and hits you right in the head. What's the first thought that comes to mind? Now, in asking this question over the past 20 years, I've had a wide variety of answers. People would sort of ignore the question sometimes and say, oh, I would just get up and look around the room and see what people what were doing, or I would take a piece of paper, I'd throw it at the first person that I would see, or pick up a chair and throw it, you know? Uh, and again, uh, this is in group therapy doing it over the years. Other people have had other reactions that they would say that they would do, that they would take the piece of paper and throw it out and not draw any more attention to themselves or wouldn't do anything and try to look around very slowly to see what's going on. But the question was, what was the first thought that comes to mind? Now, when pressed on the first actual thought, as opposed to the first behavior or first react behavioral reaction they have, people have their, people's thoughts fall into two categories, a hot thought or a cold thought. As you can imagine, a hot thought is one full of emotion. Who, threw, who the F threw that at me? What the hell's going on here? Like very animated and agitated, you know, uh, at, the, at the time. A cool thought would be something like, what happened? You know, who threw that? More of a calm, inquisitive type of reaction. Now, what determines whether or not somebody has a, a hot reaction or a cool reaction? Now, even in that, in, you know, partly that goes to what the actual hot reaction was in the first place. Sort of amalgamating all the different responses throughout the years, the common sort of like theme for that hot thought is, who threw that at me? With the underlying uh, implication that it was thrown on purpose and that they were the target. Now, why would somebody think that way? Why would somebody automatically, with a piece of paper, you know, not a brick, not a baseball, not a stone, assume that a rolled up piece of paper was thrown at them on purpose? Maybe it's not about the actual situation you know, at hand. Also, maybe it's not also about the environment. I've had plenty of people over the years give a variety of answers. Well, in a public place like a McDonald's, they might assume it, uh, it might assume a benign thing, but if they're at school, you know, they might assume somebody's teasing them. If that they're in the workplace, it, you know, they would assume one thing versus if they were in a courthouse or, or, or their home or something else. So that does matter. It also matters what, you know, their mood is in the first place. You know, if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you might have more of a tendency to have a hot thought or a cool thought. But in that thought, that hot thought, who threw that at me, it's assumed it's on purpose and at them. And again, why is that? For those factors, what if past factors? What if it's something about their either their personality or their past that of course influences their personality that would you know uh, determine one hot thought, the, the thought that they had. What if they were picked on in the past? What if they've had experience of being teased? What if they, you know, are very insecure about themselves one way or the other? That might predetermine or predispose them to have that hot thought, as opposed to another person who didn't have the reaction or might have a very benign experience, might say, oh, what happened? What was that? You know, more of a, a surprise type of reaction. Of course, if somebody has a hot thought, usually they're gonna have a hot emotion, and usually after that, that being anger, and usually after that have a, a hot reaction. And if the reaction versus who threw that of the inquisitive person or who the hell threw that and they start getting up and animated and coming at and looking around the room and coming at that one person that they think that was doing it, that could be the definitive uh, reaction that then spurns the other person who, again, rolled a piece of paper. Maybe someone was trying to be Mr. Basketball 
you know, or misses basketball and, and uh, missed the basket and hit the person by accident. Somebody's going up to apologize, but instead the person who gets hit is all agitated, says, why did you do this? Then the whole domino effect can happen. So in sum, that's one sort of uh, generic or example to elucidate the sort of the dynamics of our anger reactions. People think it's zero to 60, uh, you know, uh, action happens and a reaction is the behavior, but that interpretation of that situation goes a long way. So in anger management training or practice, a lot of times it's first determining what are those triggers? You know, what about those events that trigger these underlying, you know, thoughts, these underlying uh, issues, insecurities or otherwise, and how can we work from the bottom up to try to understand that, you know, to work on those insecu insecurities. Then also from the top down, we can understand what are those triggers? Do we have to avoid other people or, you know, uh, do we have to work on those automatic thoughts? You know, and sometimes we can't control the first thought, but we can control the second thought. If the first that who the hell threw that, it's like, well then, okay, hold on a second. Let's look around. If it's a five-year-old kid or a little baby or something who did that, that, that would warrant a different reaction that it's some other, somebody that you know up here that's looking at you and pointing a finger and laughing while you're doing it. You know, then you can at least be in control of your reactions, your behavioral reactions, you know, after you calm yourself down and work on the triggers and the, uh, the hot uh, thoughts and the anger that you experience. For more topics like this, please look at uh, the links that are provided below. And if you want, and you are a loved one, need any help with anger, depression, anxiety, or any other mental health issue, please look at the information below and contact, contact us.